Hi everyone. Today I thought I'd just play around. I had bought myself some little daisies for um, my birthday last week and I wanted to paint some of them before they completely died. So today I'm just going to play around with some really easy little daisies, little yellow centers, and um, kind of see what we come up with here. I am using my Miss Ceramics palette today. But as you know, I love that Mead palette, uh, Mead and palette. It's real heavy. It's very professional. But I have this one here with me today because it's what was sitting here. Also, I wanted to share with you um, my first choice for paints is always Windsor Newton. It's just what I've grown up with and so on. And um, I recently have started using the My Lane paints a lot more, and I love the quality. I have shared this with a lot of you. It's a great beginner set because there's so many pre-mixed colors. The colors are really creamy and bright, and I'm using them right now because it's a very affordable option for me. Um, Windsor Newton, I go through a lot of paints, as you can imagine, doing these tutorials every day. So. It just makes kind of sense for me, but I love, and my first choice is, um, for right now, Windsor Newton. I have a couple Daniel Smiths, but uh, for the most part, Windsor Newton. Today, I am going to be using um, this palette, and uh, the color I'm going to use of theirs is called Rose Red. Let me just show that to you, and if you're using your Windsor Newton palette, it's I think going to be a combination of um, probably Queen Magenta and maybe a little Opera Rose just to keep it simple. And as always, I drag it out so I can get all those different values. And then I'm going to use Violet, which in Winter Newton is Violet. I'll, I'll share all the links for these two. So there we go, just kind of drag that out. And then the color I'm gonna use, which I've really been liking in um, the uh, My Lane palette, is what they call this tree green. And it's a color I've never really used, but I'm actually kind of liking it. Uh, it's got this light color and I think it goes really well. It's kind of a complimentary color to these. So as you can see, I have a pretty bright palette going here. That's okay. That's kind of what I wanted. Um, and by the way, I'm using a, a Princeton Select brush. This is a pretty affordable Princeton brush. It's the only filbert I have, so that's why I'm using it. Um, but I actually quite like it. I always like the short handles versus the long handles. Um, which the short handles are made for watercolors because you're working closer up. Um, the longer handles are a little bit more for like um, easel painting and you're a little bit farther from your uh, canvas or paper. And I do really like this Meaden uh, ceramic water well with the two. So make sure you've got your paper towel to blot your um, two wells of water, one to wash, one to rinse and whatever palette you might be using. You can always use a, a ceramic little dish or something too. I like using kind of fun palettes. They make me happy and um, I just kind of like that. That's my thing. Today, the brushes, one of the reasons I chose the um, Select Filbert is because I just want to do some fun little daisies and um, these just make those petals so easy whether I'm doing like this or I'm using the side of my brush and doing that type of thing. See I need a little bit more water on there. Press, flick, press, flick. I did a tutorial on this the other day so that's why I'm kind of using um, this brush today. So I can just do them real quick, real easy and simple and just make it fun. Um, I might use a little bit of the dark green in there. Uh, that would be olive green in the My Lang palette, and it's also the same uh, for your Windsor Newton paints. Olive green. And sometimes I will mix in a little bit of sap green to that. 
so I might might use that a bit. Um, I think that's it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, okay, let's see here. I'm going to also, this is a 140 pound, you know my favorite, favorite paper because I like to keep all my little paintings um, you know, in one place. So this is that Artisto pad, which I love. It's affordable and, you know, I'm always trying to find um, products, not only for myself that are affordable and good quality, but for you guys as well. So this Artisto pad, which I just love their cover there. This is a new cover for them. These are my colors. Uh, you get a three pack and I think it's $17 or something like that. You can rip out your paintings. You have the perforated edge, and I just sign date these, and I keep these for reference. Uh, if you're not in the U.S., the pads I shared the other day by Meaden. Um, let me see if I have one here. Is really terrific. I I actually really like this. I would buy these again. It's 100% cotton. Um, the Artisto pads are not 100% cotton, but the quality is excellent. Uh, these are 100% cotton. 100% cotton uh, absorbs a little bit better when they use wood pulp and fillers and things like that. It doesn't absorb as well, but I am completely happy with the Artisto. So either one, and the good thing about this one, um, why I shared with you is because a lot of you were telling me you couldn't get the Artisto pads. Um, I think it was in the UK, so I wanted to offer you a nice option, and I would actually use those again. All right, let's get started. I'm just going to make this kind of big, wild bunch of these daisies I got. I love daisies. They're so fun. I've always loved daisies, and uh, we're going to paint them. And the other thing I think I'm going to try out today is double loading my brush. Uh, so what that means is I'm just going to load a different color on each side. I think that'll be kind of fun to play with. For instance, let me grab some more of this purple. I always like to have my paints mixed and in my palette before I start painting. That way I'm not, um, if I want to work wet and wet, I can go kind of quickly between colors. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more of in the My Lang. It's called uh, this rose red and to me it very much reminds me of my favorite color which is Quinn magenta and opera rose so I've got both of those ready to go um, in the um, Winsor Newton palette like I said it would probably be a uh, close to a Quinn magenta which I love that color and opera rose all right what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to fill one side with that bright pink color and the other side with the purple. So it's called double loading. And then I'm going to go in and create my petals. So look how pretty that is. Isn't that beautiful? Now, if you are going to use your paintbrush on the side, it still kind of does it but I love that look. I think it's really pretty, and because of watercolors flow together, it creates a lot of fun and interest. So that's how I'm gonna do all my little um, uh, daisies here, all right? So I'm just gonna start going in, and I just invite you to do the same thing, just kind of play and have fun and intuitively place these little flowers in here however you want. I will keep dipping into my purple and paint and pink um, paint here. And I've got that uh, paint in a very uh, fluid, um, movable uh, consistency. So about, I don't know, I'd say probably 50-50, 50 paint, 50 water. And, um, you know, I'm just making sure it's real, real movable here. I'm going to dip my side of my brush in the pink, dip the other side in the purple, and I'm just gonna start going here. Now, because I'm using my brush flat, at the end, I'm twisting it so that I get that little, you know, the petal kind of gets smaller. So press, start twisting. 
press, start twisting. And look how pretty that effect is. It's like an ombre effect. Twist at the end, twist at the end. The other thing I'm letting it do is kind of run out of paint so I get some different colors. Twist at the end and let's keep going around. Twist, now you might have to turn your paper. I'm running out of paint a little bit, so let's see how far we can go. Point, twist, point, twist, point, twist. I'm actually going quite far. I'm kind of surprised. Now in the middle, I'm gonna go ahead and wash and rinse my brush, making sure you rinse it too, because that purple and pink is pretty vibrant. And then in the middle, I think I'll just dot in, let's go with maybe some, I'm gonna be kind of careful here because if I do use yellow, yellow when it mixes with these colors can some, the purple mostly, can sometimes turn a little muddy. So I wanna be a little bit careful. So I'm just gonna use the corner. I'm putting that together in that very fluid, movable, um, texture or consistency and I'm going to dab in with the side of my brush here just like that and there you go so that's my first flower I'm going to go on to the next one and I think what I'll do with this one is um, just go into my purple first let me wash and rinse my brush Tap it off a bit. And let's go back into the purple on one side, pink on the other. And I think I'll make a little half flower here. And actually on this one, maybe what I'll do, and ooh, look how pretty. So that yellow kind of went into that petal, which I love. That's why I like working wet on wet. And I'm just gonna do kind of this side here. So I'm holding this different. For this one, I went flat. This one, I'm going on my side. Press, flick, 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 and just kind of dab in. So it kind of looks, it's smaller and it looks like it's um, just a little bit behind. I think what I'll do this time too is I'm going to go ahead and grab my eight uh, Velvet Touch Princeton round to use for that center. I can't quite get the little point with the filbert brush and I'm going to do this while this is still wet because I actually really liked how that blended in there. I think that was really pretty and there we go. So I, I kind of like that. If you don't like how much that's blending, you can dry your brush and just lift it out. Anytime you have a puddle or anything, just dry your brush and lift it out, okay? So I think that's really pretty. We wanna make sure, as I always talk about, to use different values. So using lighter and darker values, just meaning there's more pigment here and there's more water to pigment here, okay? Not to be confused with your loading your breath brush with more of the pigment in water, but you mixed more pigment than you did water here. And here is more water, so it's diluted that color. So let's go ahead and keep moving here. And I'm just flicking. This time I'm using the side of my brush. Oops, darn. And that's okay, we're gonna leave that. Point and flick, point and flick. Point and flick. There we go. Maybe add in a few more here, just in the background. You can just play and do what kind of comes to you. And then I'll go in with that Princeton brush again. Go into my yellow and just dab in in the middle and then let it spread. I might even use this brush, wash and rinse that yellow out and maybe just pick up a tiny bit of that purple. And I don't wanna have too much um, 
water on there. So I might just tap it off. See how much water came off? I don't want that on here because it might have pulled and puddled. And just kind of add some darker features in here. Just kind of play like that. So I think that's kind of fun. I really like this hue. So I'm gonna do another one right here. So let's go in, grab our filbert brush again. And um, this is just, by the way, if you see me putting that in and out, it's just what I set my brush on. So wash and rinse my filbert, kind of tap it off and pick up some of that paint. On the left side, I'm picking up that purple flop my brush over and pick up that pink. And let's just go in right here. And let's see, I think I will use the flat of my brush on this one. And then at the bottom, I spin it just to get that in. Point, spin, point, press, spin. I really like how this mixes. So left side, with the purple, right side with that pink, point, spin, point, spin, point, spin, and just continue loading your brush whenever you feel like it, or you can let it run out like we did there, point, and I actually went on top of this one so it allowed it to be in the background. It's also a lighter value, so it just automatically um, will move to the background, but especially because I put these petals over that one. All right, and then let's just go in with that eight round again. Pick up some more of that yellow. And I just tap off to get rid of any excess water, or you can again tap off on your uh, little paper towel here and go into the middle while this is wet because I really like how it mixes and makes that beautiful color. Now some of that has dried so it's not doing it on all of them. And then I'll just set my brush back on my little rest. Okay, let's do another one here and I think I'll kind of do this size again as well as that value. So I just wet my brush a little bit, picked up some of that purple paint, flipped my brush over and pick up some of the pink. And let's go in here. And I'm going to cover up these so they fall into the background. So point, twist, point, twist, point, twist. Let's see if I can turn my paper here. Point, twist, keep going, point, twist, point, twist, point, twist. And again, I really liked how I just kept using my brush and it kind of ran out. I like that. It's a different value. It's um, really interesting. This is interesting too, but if we did every single flower with this dark value, it would be boring for the eye. So right now, as a focus point, my eye kind of goes to here, and then it's pulled over here because there's a dark value, and it's pulled up here, maybe up here. So it's really moving my eye around my painting, and it's just really interesting, I think. I'll go in with my Princeton and just tap in, <coughs> excuse me, to the middle with that yellow. And I chose purple and yellow because they're contrasting colors on the um, color wheel, so they're opposites, okay? And opposites are always really fun for me to work with. I like using opposites. I just think they're um, a lot of fun. And they, as long as you don't mix them together, if you mix them together, they can turn muddy. It, it kind of depends, that's a whole nother conversation, but um, you have to be a little careful. 
Okay, so right here, I think I'm just gonna do a flower on its side. So let me pick up, I'm gonna grab a little bit more purple paint. So I washed and rinsed my brush. Oops, darn, I got that purple in my yellow, which means I'll have to get that out with a little towel or something because otherwise it'll turn into a muddy color. So just getting more of that purple paint. Rinse my brush, or wash in, rinse it. And I'm gonna go into that rose matter, pick up some of that, put that in my palette. There we go. Wash and rinse my brush. And I think what I'll even do right now is I've been double loading my brush as I showed you, which is really beautiful and fun and interesting. I think I'll go in and just do maybe a couple purple and a couple of those pink and let's see what that looks like. So loading my brush, tapping off on the side, got a pretty dark value there. And you can tap off on your brush if you feel like you might have a little bit too much. And I'm just gonna do a, um, a little side flower coming out here. So let's just press, point, press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. Just like that. Yeah, I like that. And then I'll go into my pink and maybe do one down here. Press, flick, press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. Something like that. Just to give a little bit more interest. And then I want to get I'm gonna add some of my green in now because I really want to get a little bit of bleeding. So I'm gonna go in and grab some of that beautiful green. I might even mix it with some of that green. Tap off my brush. So see how much liquid came off? And then let's just touch into this. Ooh, see, I really wanted that bleed there. And same with this. And just start creating some little stems. Just in the bottom here, just very simple. And then pick up a little bit more paint, tap off either in your palette or on your paper towel. See how much liquid's coming off? We don't want that. We always want to apply, unless you're doing a specific technique and you're working really wet and wet. We want to um, always have a little bit of um, uh, not too much water, so no puddles. I'm gonna do one more up here. Let's see. I think I'll double load my brush for this one. Just play with that. Double load it when you feel like it, and when you don't, don't. So, like that. Now what I do feel like I need to do here is just rinse off some of my paint and maybe create a couple really pale. Oops, that's a little too pale. I just wanna get some interest here and some lighter values. Now, if you're not sure how light your value is, always go to your swatch and you can see. So that's a nice light value. And let's just add in a few more here. Maybe one here, like that. Okay, and maybe we'll even add in some little buds. And then while it's still wet, I'll go in with my green, just create some little stems here, just like that. And there we go. And you could use darker greens in there if you want. Let's grab some of that darker olive green, which is the same in Windsor Newton. And just maybe add in some darker variations. 
And what that immediately does is it pulls the lighter into the background. And then I noticed my daisies had those crazy little leaves, which I really don't usually like, but we'll go for those because that's what my daisies had. So I'm just using the very tip, very light, light, light pressure. And I'm going in and just putting in some little leaves. Very light pressure, holding my paintbrush up and down. And just kind of playing, adding them in wherever I feel like I want to. I need maybe a little filler. And there you go, look how fun that is. I think I wanna add a really light value flower in the background here. So let me grab, and maybe a couple little buds might be fine. So let's grab our brush, our filbert, and just practice that lighter value. So I've got that lighter value, which is what I wanted. And just add in some. So right away, see how that just looks like it's in the background? And I love that. I love playing with values. I talk about that a lot because I think it's such an easy technique that makes such a difference. And then wash and rinse my brush, pick up some of that green, kind of mixing the sap green and the olive green together. Tap off on your palette, or you can tap off on here. And I'm going to add a couple little buds. Just use the side of my brush. And little buds that maybe haven't opened yet. I think that's kind of fun. And I'll go to my eight round filbert, tap it off, pick up with the tip of my brush, some paint, dab it off, and just create some little lines here like that. You could even use this brush to make some little buds if you wanted. And I just think that's really cute. I think it's good just like that. I'm not even gonna add any more um, little leaves down here. I think this is perfect. So have fun with this. It's um, a really simple little composition. I've got um, my main flowers in here and I've tried to kind of guide your eye around the paper with some of the darks. And I used my fun little filbert brush today, which I think is so easy for beginners for little daisies and things. You could always go back in here if you wanted. I need to get myself um, some little fine brushes. I actually had a company called Zenart approach me and asked me if I wanted to try theirs out. And I, I said, yes, absolutely. So when I get those, I'll share those with you and see what I think. I just took with the tip of my brush and picked up, and I this is such a light pressure, I'm almost not touching the paper. And I just added in some little dots. You don't have to do this. But sometimes it's fun to just add a little tiny little detail. Make sure this yellow has completely dried before you do that. And there you go. All right, everybody, I hope you give this a try. And um, I feel better now. I painted my little wild daisies before I have to throw them out. And I will list all my supplies down below. All right, thanks everybody.